Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to create a registration form in PHP, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. A few prerequisites that we'll need for this project is that we'll need a table within a database. We have created one in prior topics. We have an ID, a user, a password, and a registration date. You'll need a working database connection as well, which is what we have done here. In my index file, I have included that PHP code that contains my connection. Then we will write a second PHP script within this file. We are going to close our MySQL connection because if we don't do it now, I know that I'm going to forget later, so let's close it now. And we are closing our connection. Let's go to our index file, generate some HTML, we'll create a pair of form tags, For the action, we're going to set this to a PHP script within quotes. Just in case I update the name of this file, this script will reflect the changes. So let's create a PHP script. We will get from our server super global variable PHP self. Accessing the key of PHP self, that will give us the name of the file. But this is vulnerable to cross site scripts we should enclose this within a filter. HTML special chars is a good one for this situation. Then we should set the method equal to post because we're creating a registration form. Let's add a title to our web page. Let's use an h2 header tag. Welcome to Fakebook. It's like Facebook, but worse. We'll have a user type in a username and a password. Username, add a break, add a text box, input type equals text, the name attribute will be username, add a break, and I'm just saving and reloading everything as I go along. We'll need a password. Create an input tag, set the type equal to password. The name will be password as well. Add a break. Then let's create a submit button. That is also an input tag. The type will be submit. For the name, let's set that to be submit as well. Then for the value, maybe register. That looks pretty good. Okay, our form is complete. Let's go to our PHP script. The method of our form is set to post. We can detect that with an if statement. We will access the server super global variable and check the request method key. So type request method. Is this equal to post? Has the request method changed to post? If a post request is made, we should filter both the username and the password just in case they contain a malicious script. So let's assign our username equal to, we will filter the input using the filter input function, type input post because we're using post. The second argument is the attribute name, username. Then a filter type, filter, sanitize special chars let's copy this line then paste it directly underneath but change username to password do that here too so that should filter any malicious scripts once we have a username and a password that's been filtered we'll check if one of these fields is empty we can use an if statement. Let's check if our username is empty. If empty function, our username. Then we will echo, please enter a username. Else if our password is empty, empty function. Let's check our password. 
please enter a password. Let's test that real quick. I'll type in a username, but not a password. Please enter a password. I won't type in a username, but I'll type in a password. Please enter a username. If we type in both, nothing happens, but that's good. If our username isn't missing and our password isn't missing, we can execute an else clause. In our database, we'll want to store a hash of a password. Let's take our password, declare a hash variable, then use the password hash function. We will pass in our password, then an option. Let's use password default. Okay, now that we have our hash, we need to write an SQL query. We'll insert the username and the hash of the password. We'll store our SQL query within a variable, SQL. Then we will write the query. It's going to be an insert statement. Insert into the name of the table. In this case, my table is named users. List the columns, user and password. Values. List the values. We will be inserting our username variable as well as our hash, the hash variable. Then to initiate the query, we can use the query function mysqli underscore query. Pass in our connection as the first argument, followed by our SQL query. Once that's complete, we should probably let the user know that they registered successfully. Let's echo, you are now registered. For the username, I will type SpongeBob. SpongeBob will have a password of pineapple1. I'll click register. You are now registered. Let's go to our table, refresh. I might need to zoom out a little bit. And here's the first record, user ID one, username is SpongeBob. This is the hash of the password. And I have a registration date. One important thing I forgot to mention, I'm only allowing in this table unique user IDs. If I were to register another user as SpongeBob, we might have a little problem. SpongeBob, I'll make up another password. Fry cook too. Well, we get a fatal error. Uncaught MySQL exception. We have a duplicate entry for SpongeBob. We never really talked much about exception handling, but one way in which you could handle this exception is that we can copy the exception name, place any code that might cause an exception within a try block, then catch that exception. In this case, it was a MySQL exception. Then let's echo that username is taken. There's still a lot more you can do with exceptions, but that's more of a, an intermediate topic, I would say. Let's type in SpongeBob again. Fry cook two and register. That username is taken. Let's create the username Squidward. Squidward will have a password of clarinet2. You are now registered. And here's Squidward. All right, everybody. So I thought that would be a fun final project for us to do to wrap up this video. I would look at both object-oriented programming and exception handling next. Hey, if you made it this far, be sure you've smashed that like button. Leave a random comment down below and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.